Welcome to HortTube. In this video, I'm going to be refreshing the soil uh, on my uh, weeping contorted uh, Japanese maple. I actually uh, have contorted the trunk on this tree over the last 10 years or so. Um, it doesn't hurt it at all. Uh, I basically put a piece of uh, bamboo in here, bend a limb one direction, tie it to it, leave it there for some period of time. When you untie it, it stays in that position. Again, doesn't hurt the tree. Every time I show this tree, somebody says, poor tree. This tree is well loved, trust me. I've had it for a long time and I'll have it for a long time. And uh, obviously it's dormant right now. It doesn't have leaves. This is a good time uh, on your dormant um, container plants to uh, repot them or anything that you're not relying on flowers. So if you had boxwoods and containers or um, I've got an Arizona cypress in the front yard that I am about to uh, repot and uh, this uh, weeping Japanese maple because it's completely dormant. I brought this azalea over here as an example of something I wouldn't repot right now because it's going to bloom in about three weeks. And so if I did any repotting or disturbing of the roots right now, I'd probably be sacrificing a lot of these flowers. So this azalea is gonna go to the side. I'm gonna enjoy it flowering uh, in a few weeks. And then um, I'm gonna pull it out of that container, knock some of the soil off and uh, refresh it. Okay, um, I always get the question on every container plant video is what can I put in a container and just leave it? And the answer is pretty much nothing. Uh, at some point, um, either the plant is going to use up all of the space uh, with roots. Um, and I'll give you an example of that right now. This is a uh, tree formed uh, Indian hawthorn right here. It's about to flower, really beautiful plant. See how it's been tree formed? It's about to go in the ground and in my yard here, uh, it's been in this three gallon container way too long. And you can see all the roots. Um, it has very little of anything other than roots uh, in this container. You can see how the giant roots on the surface up here at the top. And uh, that's an example of a plant that's got to be either go in the ground or go into a larger container. Uh, everything's gonna outgrow the container. Even something like hosta. If I put a hosta in here, it'd be years, but eventually the hosta would fill the entire container up and you'd see the leaves diminish over the years as they were competing with one another. So it's best to occasionally uh, pull your plants out of the pots, even if you're not going to up pot them, knock some of the old soil off, maybe do a little bit of root pruning and, uh, and put some fresh soil into the container. And I'll fertilize it uh, at the same time. Uh, one thing that's missing when we're container planting plants, typically we're using a lot of organic material either peat moss or um, coconut core or uh, pine bark or compost. That's typically what we're using in these outdoor uh, planted uh, containers. And there's no minerals in that. I mean, there, there are some, there's some nutrients in compost, obviously, but um, there's no, um, there are no minerals in it. So there's no, there's no clay in it. There's no sand in it. There's no silt in it. And that's where plants that are planted in the ground get most of their nutrients from. And uh, in order to keep the plants kind of mobile, keep the pot semi kind of light where we can move it around, we're not gonna fill it up with clay, uh, typically. Some people will use some pumice or um, some sort of rock dust or something like that uh, as mineral, uh, you know, as a mineral component to their potting mix. That's great if you wanna do that. Typically, I'll just use pine bark soil conditioner or, or compost or peat moss, uh, maybe some blend of that together, and then I'll just fertilize the top of the container. That keeps it kind of light uh, and mobile despite the size of this tree. I can, I can pick it up. It's not light, but I can pick it up and move it. I think that's all uh, the information that I want to uh, give. If you have questions here, you know, ask them down below. But again, I don't think there's anything that you can put in a container and just leave it forever and expect for that plant to really thrive and be happy and perform unless you occasionally either give it a bigger pot or some fresh um, uh, soil component. And for me, that's gonna be organic material. Again, it could be mineral. Um, it could be rock dust or something like that. This tree had actually rooted into the ground and I've gotta do a little bit of, I gotta get rid of the roots that had come through the drainage hole in the bottom of it right there. It had locked itself uh, onto, into the ground. When I'm um, growing trees and shrubs and containers, things that I'm going to have, want to do this with occasionally, I like to have a container that continues to get larger near the top of the container. Again, this is Zellia. If you can still see this pot, it's kind of a V shape and the plant will slide out easily. 
I put a palm in a container last week over here and the container restricts as it gets near the top. And I already dread repotting that thing next year um, because it's going to be difficult to pull that thing out of a pot where the top of the root ball is restricted. Uh, so this one should be easier. It's only been in here again for a year and uh, so I'm not that worried about it. This is a uh, concrete container that is a concrete and fiber container. Uh, it's a beautiful pot, but it's not the strongest pot in the world. It's not solid. It's not a very thick concrete, so i got to be a little bit cautious with this one. But I'm just going to tap this uh, rim on this thing and see if I can just get it to free up on its own. And I'm not, so um, I'm going to have to dig around the side of it a bit with a uh, trowel. I'll just slip this trowel into the side here just to see if I can get this thing to unlock. This container has some texture to it, and uh, probably the roots are just growing along that textured side of that container and locking it in there. Uh, okay, got it. Amazing how something as simple as that little trowel going around the edge um, can loosen, loosen it up. I need to get something uh, um, so when I pull this out, it doesn't get all over my uh, grass here. So you saw me uh, loosen it up, and uh, I'm just going to pull them out of here like this and uh, set it to the side like that and because this has only been in here a year it doesn't look anything like the Indian hawthorn that I showed you it does have a lot of roots and they're matted down um, pretty good here and again down here on the bottom there's a ton a ton of roots down here and I'm really going to I think I'm actually just going to saw that entire uh, um, bottom uh, inch or so off of this uh, root ball which i know will seem um, tragic i'm doing it while the plant's dormant it's not going to bother it um, at all and it's going to be really really happy with the fact that i've got some fresh uh, potting soil uh, in this container with it so i just have a folding uh, pruning saw here and i'm just going to be kind of rather aggressive about taking taking off this really matted part down here at the bottom of this tree i'll roll it over occasionally try not to mess up anything on the top of it obviously okay there you go solid mat of roots that was on the bottom of this and then um, I'm gonna come in here on the side of it and just go after some of these roots again most of my root issues are right down at the bottom of this thing again seems mean but is not uh, okay all right one thing to know the damage that i just did on these roots when i get to that azalea and i do the same thing on that azalea i will prune part of that azalea off so after it flowers i'm going to pull it out of the container do the exact same thing i did but i'm also reduce the top a little bit to compensate for the damage that i did down here don't really need to do this on this dormant tree this dormant tree will be will be fine by the time it leaves out in three four weeks it will have uh it's going to have new roots on it uh anyway and uh kind of refill the container since i just took soil or potting mix off the bottom i'm going to put some uh back into the very bottom of this container this is actually just some compost that i have uh, i'm using a little bit more compost because the top of this tree when it has leaves on it it has the potential to fall over and it fell over a few times back there last year and i don't want to do that again and this compost is a little bit heavier and so that's why i'm using it it's actually got a little bit of sand uh blended into it uh and i think that's going to help just give me a little bit of weight that's all that's the only reason i'm doing that instead of bark really uh okay so i put about two inches back on the bottom to make up for that um root roots that i uh took off the bottom of it I'm gonna carefully lift them back up set them back into the uh, into here okay and then and now I've got space around the outside where I just knocked roots you know where I just root pruned it and knocked it around quite a bit to tuck in some more of this uh, compost uh, into these voids uh, again this could be a bark mix it could be potting soil it could be uh, 
some sort of rock dust that you include in it to give some minerals. Uh, don't cover anything. I'm not trying to bury this tree, okay? Um, be careful with that. But I'm trying to fill all the voids around the outside of it. This is gonna buy me another year in this container. That's the whole point of this operation is to buy me another year in this same size container. I think this will be the last year in this size though. I'll bump it up a couple inches uh, next year. But uh, just that little bit of additional organic material, fresh organic material, the uh, seriously root bound part being taken off. And I'm also happy to have a little additional weight uh, in this container for this year as well. So here's another container that I actually need to uh, do the same exact thing to. This is an Arizona Cypress in a container that, heck, it's probably about a 25 gallon container. It grew like a weed in this container last year, because of course it did. It, I gave it the perfect, uh, the perfect soil mix and the perfect amount of water. It's gone kind of wild in that container. This is a tree that can get 40 feet tall. Clearly it can't stay in that container forever. So uh, I'm going to do the same thing I did with the Japanese maple. I'm gonna pull it out, uh, refresh um, the soil. And on this one, I'm going to definitely be doing some pruning. So I'm just gonna shear it a little bit closer, keep it in kind of a pyramid um, or a you know, tight conical shape. So here's the Japanese maple uh, back in its home in the backyard with newly refreshed uh, soil. I only switched out maybe, maybe 15 or 20% of the soil. Um, the root pruning was probably the most beneficial thing since they were just circling around uh, and it had locked itself uh, to the ground. If I let that that situation go on another year with it rooting into the ground like it was, um, it would have been really hard to, uh, to remove uh, at that point. So that's another reason to uh, stay on top of this. Uh, you can use something like Osmocote uh, to fertilize. Uh, if you want to, that's a slow release fertilizer, lasts about you know four or five months. Uh, I tend to use organic fertilizers. Um, I'll use plant tone. I'm just showing you an example of a organic fertilizer right this second. I don't really need to use holly tone because this soil is definitely uh, acidic with the uh, pine bark that's in that mix. But again, whatever soil mix you want to use, um, and I added some some compost uh, this time around to uh, add a little bit because it's just a heavier a heavier component. But I thought I'd go through the uh, process of how I uh, refresh my uh, containers every year and give you some reasons for doing it. I hope I didn't confuse anyone here. And if you have any questions, uh, ask them down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for upcoming content. Thanks for watching.